Okay, hello. Uh, my name is Musfer, I'm the speaker, and uh, here are also my two uh, collaborators uh, who helped me to obtain the results I will present in my talk. So uh, initially I plan to mainly focus on the really uh, dynamic picture of relativistic heavy ion collisions and the model we developed to describe them. But then I saw that we have a lot of participants from the different fields of physics, so I decided to make a more general review and present our recent results obtained with Anton from uh, applying machine learning to our simulations. So uh, I will start from the strong, uh, strong force. Uh, as we know from the school, there are uh, in, at least that's how they teach us at school that there are four uh, main four interactions strong, uh, electromagnetic, weak, etc. But uh, I will focus on the strong force. Uh, and uh, sorry, uh, yeah, and uh, in the standard model, uh, strong force is described by the quantum chromodynamics or QCD, and the elementary particles of this theory are quarks and gluons. But uh, as we saw in the previous talks, uh, we usually don't speak about them. We speak about the protons, neutrons, etc., and their combinations. That's because uh, these particles carry color charge and uh, the states with uh, with the color charge are not absorbed in the typical uh, circumstances. Instead, they should combine in the colorless combination. Like for example, in this case, proton, it consists of three quarks and maybe virtual quarks and gluons that exist for short period of times inside. Yeah, but that's not always true. For example, uh, in the some, uh, if, if the density of this matter is pretty high, like for example, in the very early universe, uh, these quarks and gluons can be deconfined. And that's why, that's one of the purpose uh, of the collider experiments. So they try to do the, uh, to create these extreme uh, densities just like in the early universe. So uh, th this, like a pic uh, this is a, a picture uh, of the, this huge circle, which is actually under the ground. We, th it is the Large Hadron Collider. And there people accelerate particles, usually uh, protons or very heavy nuclei like, like gold or lead. And uh, they are accelerated up to the almost to the speed of light, and they collide. And the result of these experiments, you, we see something like this: tracks of a lot of new particles that we haven't inside the initial nuclei. Yeah. So one of the goals of these experiments is the study of uh, phase diagram of QCD. Like uh, in the context of my talk, we are interested in two phases. This is hadron gas. Yes at low temperatures, uh, which should consist of protons, neutrons, maybe light nucleus, other resonances, etc. And at high temperatures, when this uh, quarks and gluons inside these hadrons, they confined uh, in thermal equilibrium, we expect uh, this exotic state of matter, like uh, call it quark gluon plasma. Uh, yeah. So uh, usually, like for example, for water, if you have two phases, like liquid and gas, you expect that there is a phase transition line between them. Yeah, but for, for in this case, we are not for sure. But from the lattice QCD uh, calculations, we, are, we know that uh, at the, here you see the baryonic chemical potential. At zero baryonic chemical potential, there is no phase transition between, between these two phases. Instead, we have a smooth crossover. So uh, if there is a phase transition line, it should add, end uh, by, with the critical point. So, uh, one of the goals of experiment to, to see, uh, find this uh, line of critical uh, of phase transition and the critical point. Yeah, but uh, and and the idea of this is just uh, experimental studies are usually just to uh, accelerate uh, nuclei to different energies. Like for example, here three GV very low in for this field of physics very low energy, and at LHC we have uh, up to several electron volts. And uh, by the accelerating this nuclei to different energies, we can, at the initial moment of collision, we can get to the different points of this phase diagram. Like uh, at, at low energies, we are here, at very large here, and uh, we can get somewhere in between. And then if we get to the, uh, we get some initial condition uh, at this diagram, uh, then the system evolves, it cools down, it exists in the vacuum. So uh, at some po point, it, uh, the quarks and gluons should confine again into the hadron. So uh, the system evolves uh, along some 
line like this. And only after that, uh, much later than it crosses this line, we measure. Uh, we do some measurements in experiments. So like uh, here, here you, have, uh, you, ha you have a problem. So if uh, there is some signals of phase transition, critical point, et cetera, you make measurements much later and uh, you, you can lose, lose all, all of these signals. And that's why you want to develop some uh, theoretical dynamical model to describe all this evolution and maybe see what traces can be found in the measurements. Uh, and for at least for LHC energies, uh, this uh, like this is like here, uh, people more or less know uh, how this process is happening. So here we have uh, two nuclei, which are Lorentz contracted because they're moving almost with the speed of light. Then uh, they collide, creating new particles. Then the system uh, thermalizes, we believe, very quite fast. Uh, then it expands into the vacuum. So here we have hadronization or confinement. Uh, then this hadron gas still evolves uh, with some interaction until it becomes so dilute so uh, uh, that the hadrons uh, stop to interact. So they just freely fly by to detectors where we do our measurements. But at low energies, which we are interested uh, in the context of my talk, uh, that's kind of questionable. So there are a lo lot of uh, maybe complicated to explain in short period of time uh, aspects of physics. So we just took it into account to develop the model, uh, which can basically took this initial condition just as an experiment to, to nuclei moving towards, toward each other with some energy. Uh, and then we describe in our model all the stages just as I described on the previous slide. And in the result of these simulations, we have something like that, just like an experiment tracks of newly created particles. So basically we can uh, do the same as an experiment, but in numerical simulations. And uh, th this is, uh, this is uh, done work and this in preparation to pub, uh, to um, to publication with my uh, supervisor professor Yuri Sinukov. So here are some results of our simulations so uh, which I think is quite interesting. Uh, here are shown uh, momentum spectra don't, don't think in detail what is it it's just some uh, spectra for different particles uh, like pions, kaons, protons etc. And here we have two different lines, uh, red and blue. And these two lines correspond to the uh, different parameters uh, which we put into the model. Y you don't need to understand all of them. Like the one important part is that they have different, uh, we apply different equation of states. And in this equation of states, some other theoretical groups try to account so some effects of phase transition. And the first one doesn't have phase transition, it is crossover, like for example, at LHC energies and in the blue one, there is phase transition of first order. But as you see, we can describe the data, this experimental data, almost in the same way. Not perfect, pretty good, not perfect, but kind of the same. But the parameters are very different and uh, the physics is quite different too. Yeah. and. Uh, so, so what we want to do next, that's our ongoing research. Uh, so uh, we, we actually want to uh, see, co comparing the results of our simulations with the experimental data, we want to find the signals of phase transition or critical point, et cetera. So how to do that? There are different uh, ideas, but uh, two basics are include somehow uh, this physics of phase transition, for example, into your model. Like, on the previous slide, we saw two equation of state states, and then you see uh, which one uh, describes the data better. And another one, you say, I don't know nothing about how to account this phase transition. So you use just one equation of state and see, see what happens. And then you, you probably, if your model is good enough, which we hope so, uh, you will describe uh, data quite good at some energies, but uh, at some point, your model will, will break. So you can think that at this point, you probably reach the region of phase transition or critical point. And for, so, so, so the plot, if, if you extract the parameters from your model and uh, plot their dependence on the energy, you will see something nice at uh, high energies and then this line will break and there, there will be some deviation from the analytical dependence. So you can think that this is possibly a signal of critical point, for example. 
Yeah, so and uh, because we can do basically the same as an experiment, so we can generate a lot of data in our model in the same way, like uh, what coming to the mind is to apply machine learning to that. Uh, and our plan is to build the model, which we already done. Uh, it's called IHKM, Integrated, integrated Hydrokinetic Model. It has some parameters, as we show, uh, saw before. It doesn't matter what the, are they. But uh, you put the parameters into the model, uh, generate uh, data, just an experiment, and plot observables in the same way. Then you, put, uh, you feed these observables into some neural network and try to recover the same par uh, the parameters you put initially into the model. So we see this full cycle. And then again, we can conduct an experiment, which was already done, of course, and get the same observables, put them into your neural network and extract the properties of the properties of in this case, these are properties of the matter. Yeah, and we already tried to do it, but uh, that's like very, very preliminary results for one energy, for one specific configuration, etc. So there are six parameters, and actually four of them are uh, kind of physically understandable. So I will not focus on that, but uh, we, we, we really want to extract them from the model. And what you hear here, here is that uh, on the uh, horizontal axis, you have different values of the parameters. And on the vertical axis, you see the, their values extracted from the uh, neural network. And uh, so, so in the ideal case, they should uh, all be aligned during, uh, along this orange, orange line. But we can also extract from the neural network uh, deviations, like uh, st standard deviations. They are shown here. And you, you, see, you see that also there are some parameters that could not, uh, couldn't be recovered from the neural network. And they are actually not very physical, but they are techni technically like, ne needed to, to, for, for the model to work. And you cannot recover them, but they create noise and uh, they do not allow you to extract all these parameters perfectly. And this is, as I said, ongoing research with Anton Rodokovsky and also Yuri Sinukov, and this is preliminary results. So uh, that's basically all uh, at this point I want to stop and I'll wrap up my talk. So maybe just short conclusions. So uh, collider experiments are very important to uh, probe uh, the QCD in experiment and in particular to uh, investigate QCD phase diagram and to find uh, phase transition or critical point in that. Uh, there are many factors that do not allow you to uh, do it perfectly in experiment, and that's why you need to develop theoretical model. Uh, we tried to do that, uh, and developed one of this model. And then uh, the last part of my talk, uh, I said how we are, go are, how we are planning to, uh, to, know, uh, to get this physics from using our model and neural networks. Thank you. Thank you. Please, questions? Sorry, uh, shear viscosity as parameter isn't always constant in your considerations, uh, which is equal to usually to curve to value 0 yeah. 0.08. Uh, yeah, right. So I, I propose to not stop on the parameters, but because you already know them and I don't need to explain you to them, Yes, really. In this, in this, on this plot, you see that uh, this is exactly the value uh, that you mentioned. But for example, in uh, this investigation, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, you see it again this uh, parameter with shear viscosity, and uh, we, we, if you don't know its value, right? We, we have a theoretical approximation, approximate values. But okay. in principle, you can put any number, just shown here, okay, from zero okay. to zero point twenty-five. And then you could try to recover that from this uh, initially from neural network and the model, and then from the real data. And okay, okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, uh, ju just a, a question for this slide. Uh, yeah. You you obtain uh, some good uh, result uh, for uh, some parameters uh, uh, from neural network, yes. uh, but uh, two of them uh, are very bad. Yes. Uh, and uh, this is the problem of neural network. There are some physical problems in principle that cannot be overcome uh, within the framework of uh, machine learning. 
uh, there might be both of them. So uh, for, first of all, these are quite technical parameter. Uh, th they are connected to the some theoretical procedure. So uh, the hydrodynamic, which is used in our theoretical model, this is micro microscopic theory, and uh, there you need to average over the ensemble. And uh, you can't really do it because uh, you need to generate a lot of events and then average over them. It's very complicated. Uh, and because of them, you, you, you do some tricks uh, using Gaussian smoothing, and uh, there are two parameters appearing them there. So first of all, them, uh, they are not really physical, so that's the problem. And another problem that uh, they may be, uh, their influence is much smaller, for example, than of this parameter. And that's why you, uh, this is kind of a noise over the, the influence of this parameter. And that's why you don't see it. In principle, you can increase your statistics, generate even more events, and try to find something. But because these parameters are not really physical, we are not intent to do that. OK, please. More questions? Yes, yes. Ask, ask, please. OK. Musver, um, I have a very important question for me. Uh, do you tell about integrated uh, hydrokinetic uh, mo uh, models? Yeah, hydrodynamic uh, is uh, no uh, described to the uh, dissipation equation. Yeah, what means the uh, integrated system in this sense? Yeah, integrated means povna povna model. I believe that this this some sort of historic name because people had kinetic models. And, high, uh, and hydrodynamic models for different stages of this process. And integrated means that they are combined into the one large that can describe the full process from the beginning to the end. So there are models which can describe very good this stage, third one. Some of them can do the fourth, some can do the fifth. And integrated means that it can combine all of them into the one full model. But this is not change sense uh, integrated. Uh, uh, must exist the uh, 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 integrate of motion. Motion integrate. Uh, Bogdan Ivanovich, this does not have a relationship to integral. This has a relationship to a complete model, a complete model, which includes everything. All stages, all... Yes, so as, as I said, this is kind of historical name, so we can discuss it. It's an integral. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, integrated uh, neutron. Ah, yes. yes. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Understand. Пока пока не буде інших питань, я я задам питання. Please. <laughs> Can I have a question? Uh, as I understand, you checked your model on the experimental results. Where exactly have you gotten experimental results? Did you get some from the LHC or did you get some from the uh, other um, collider? Yeah, so uh, of course I didn't talk about that because uh, I worried that I didn't have time, but uh, here you have, uh, uh, here you can see this the energy of the uh, experiment. This is 14.5 GV. This is the energy of relativistic heavy ion collider uh, in USA, and uh, that's actually even 0 to 5 centrality, one particular centrality, which means that very central collision with very small impact parameters. Yeah. Mena uh, petanya. Один із способів знайдення цієї о, оцей. Mm -hmm. Ви кажете, в мене дуже добра модель. Я буду описувати з цією моделлю експериментальні дані при різних енергіях і отримаю, що ці параметри моделі різко змінюються в якійсь малій малому околі енергії. Так. Але і, і, і це буде сигналом або фазового переходу, або критичної точки, або це, щось таке. Це може таке. бути сигналом. Да, да, да. Але я кажу, якщо я подивлюсь на самі експериментальні дані, то я не бачу ніяких різких змін при цих енергіях, ні, ніяких екзотичних сигналів, нічого. Так. А у вашій моделі дуже добрий. Е, мають місце, ну це можливо, я не кажу, що воно так буде, але mm -hmm. це можливо, що так буде. 
Буде проходити різкі зміни цих параметрів. І ви кажете, о, це сигнал, а в даних ніякого сигналу ми не бачимо. Ви кажете, ну, ви не бачите, тому що у вас немає такої гарної моделі, інтегрована гідрокінетична модель, і немає нейронних сітей, які це аналізують. Нейронних мереж, так? Да? Ну, ну, дивіться. Що ви будете робити у цьому випадку, якщо в ваші, ваші, вашій логіці буде якийсь сигнал, а в даних не буде ніякого сигналу? А, дивіться, що, що, що може, наприклад, відбутися? А, от як я тут е, кажу, що система якось еволюціонує, і потім є якась довга динаміка після, наприклад, переходу. А, от. А, і, і воно все затирає. А в своїй теорі, в моделі, ви кажете, а я, я не знаю нічого про фазу, про рівняння стану, я завжди кажу, закладаю кросовер. Ви, ви знаєте, що якщо рівняння стану з кросовером і, або фазового переходу першого роду, вони достатньо різні, там різні тиски, система буде довше існувати, менше існувати. При цьому, тобто в експериментальних результатах, а, це, ну, в експерименті це, звісно, наявно все враховано, закладено природою. А ви цього не робите. І тому ви почнете... Ви спостережувані будете описувати дуже добре. Моє питання більш просте. Так. Що ви будете робити, якщо з оцього машинного навчання так. ви побачите деякий сигнал, а люди, експериментатори, теоретики, які не знають вашої програми машинного навчання, будуть дивитися на експериментальні дані і нічого не бачать там, ніяких, ніяких ви... різких змін, нічого. А вони не, 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 не зобов'язані це бачити. Тому ну, що... ну я, я розумію, так як це буде, як це буде виглядати. Ну, ви, ти... ви кажете, у вас немає моделі, у вас немає цих нейронних мереж, так. тому ви нічого не бачите. А в мене це є, а ми кажемо, так ми ну, не знаємо. Ну, тому що ми дивимося тут на параметри. Ми дивимося ну, я на... розумію. Но, но но вони, в них ніколи немає в'язкості в експерименті. У теоретичних моделях є в'язкість, ну нема проблем. Ми, наприклад, ми отримаємо, що тут в'язкість, яка от, оця мінімальна 0,08, а тут в якийсь момент Ні, вона починається... Ну, я розумію, ну, але стандартний, стандартна логіка пошуку яких сигналів uh-huh. е, каже таке, змінюйте енергію і дивіться за якою спостережуваною. Так. Ніякої теорії, ніяких інтегрованих моделей, нічого ну, немає. Ну, це Я, стан... якась, якась експериментальна характеристика. Так. Якщо вона різко змінюється, то це є підозра на те, що там буде якась критична точка чи щось таке. А ви кажете, ні, ми так нічого не побачимо. Угу. Ну, ні, то це змінює зовсім, зовсім змінює, як то кажуть, методологію. Так, так, це інша методологія, звісно. Так. Ну, а хто ж це повірить? Якщо, якщо ми нічого не бачимо, а ви кажете, ні. З мого аналізу це витікає. Є інші теоретичні групи зі своїми моделями. Вони зроблять те саме. І вони, наприклад, скажуть, а в нас цього нема. Так. І, скажуть, і що що ну, мабуть, робити? у вас неправильно. І що будете робити? Так, так наука і робиться. Ага. Інші люди все. будуть перевіряти. Вони Зрозуміло. можуть підтвердити або не підтвердити. Це, це я зрозумів. Добре. Так. Хто ще хоче задати питання? Дуже цікава доповідь. Вона стимулювала багато питань. Є, якщо є питання, задавайте. Ні, ми переходимо до останньої до останньої четвертої доповіді цієї секції.